Hello friends and welcome to Hive Time with Teacher Lori. That's me, you're still you, and I have my Hive helper today, Teacher Elise. Hi. And I'm so excited. We actually have matching snow uh, penguin jammies on right now, <laughs> but I realize you can't see them because it's from here down. Um, today's story is very special. And I asked my best friend Elise to come and do this because we would like to dedicate the reading of the story to Miss Terry of Lake Forest Park Montessori because, yeah, and Dix, she says, yeah, because this book is very near and dear to Miss Terry and we thought of you. And since we've both worked with you, we wanted to bring you the Nutcracker. We're going to be reading the Nutcracker today. And we have, we're gonna have an audio. This is the story orchestra version of the Nutcracker. So we're gonna try really hard to do this. Oh, by the mic. Yeah, okay, we're gonna give it a roll. So parents, we got you 10 minutes. Go get your coffee, go get your tea. And then we are going to read Valeria, illustrated by Valeria Do Campo, based on the New York City's performance of George Balanchine's The Nutcracker. All right. Are you ready to sing the circle song? I will follow along. Put your hands up, put your hands down, slide them very slowly. Slide them very fast. I'm going to let her sing because she's a better singing voice than I do. Put, put your, your hands up. Put your hands down, roll them very slowly, roll them very fast. One more. Put your hands up, put your hands down. Let's do, what do you want to do? Pound. Them. Pound them very slowly, pound them very fast. Lay them in your lap. All right. Ears ready, eyes ready, mouth closed, thumbs up. We got you. Okay. I'm going to try to be the props person here. Okay. All right. Is that not you ready? Okay. It's called the Nutcracker. She really has read Circle Time stories before, so I'm not too worried about this. It was Christmas Eve at the Stalbum's home. And like children everywhere, Marie and Fritz were so excited that they could feel their toes tingle. Their parents were decorating the Christmas tree before the big holiday party, and Marie and Fritz were not allowed into the great room until it was done. They jostled each other to sneak a peek at the glittering tree through the keyhole. At last, the guests arrived and the doors were thrown open. Let the party begin, everyone cried as they joyfully filled the festive room. We're gonna assume that that's that song. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, sorry. There's that picture. And then... Okay. The children danced and played and everyone was merry until the lights flickered and the room grew dark. A mysterious man with a young boy entered from the shadows. The man was dressed all in black with a huge fluttering cape. The children scurried to hide behind their parents just as he paused and flung back his cape over his shoulder. Ah, there was nothing to fear. It was just Herr Dosselmeyer, Marie's beloved godfather. Marie flew into his arms for a hug and shyly met his young nephew. feel like prancing while we read this it's totally fine i always thought hair dulcimer it was kind of creepy so this is good this is a good telling of this version <laughs> hair dulcimer was a toy inventor and a visit from him was always full of surprises the curious children their eyes full of wonder gathered around three huge boxes he had brought with him suddenly the boxes sprang open and out leaped one life-size doll then another then another the dolls danced for the delighted crowd. As the celebration continued, Herr Drosselmeyer beckoned to Marie. He had a special gift for her, a nutcracker. The nutcracker was dressed as a handsome soldier with a white beard. 
Herr Drosselmeyer showed Marie how the nutcracker could open and snap his mouth to crack nuts for everyone. Crack, crack. I love reading books with you. I forgot how much fun this was. <laughs> I love the music, and it's Tolstoy, I think, yes? Mm, Tolstoy, the music of Tolstoy. Mm -hmm. All right. Marie was enjoying cracking nuts and passing them out to the children when suddenly, jealous Fritz swooped in and snatched the nutcracker from her. He swung it around the room and smashed it down onto the floor with a loud bang. Marie burst into tears. Her beloved nutcracker was broken. But, Herr Drosselmeyer knew just how to fix the nutcracker. He tied a scarf around the nutcracker's head like a bandage and handed him back to Marie, who cradled him in her arms. Then Herr Drosselmeyer's nephew gave Marie a tiny bed that was the perfect size for a nutcracker. And Marie nestled him in to rest. I think this is the next one. Oh, that is the next one. Yeah. We'll wait. <laughs> we'll wait, we'll get there. Okay. We have space now. The party was coming to a close and everyone joined in for one last grand dance. When the music ended, the guests bundled up and made their way out into the frosty night air. Marie waved goodbye to her dear godfather and his handsome nephew. It had been a long evening and it was time for bed. I think we're almost there. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. The pages need to match the other book. <laughs> During the night, Marie awoke, remembering that the Nutcracker was alone downstairs in his bed. She ran down to scoop him up. When the Nutcracker was safely in her arms, she curled up on the sofa and drifted back to sleep in the soft glow of the Christmas tree. She hadn't been asleep for long when Herr Drosselmeyer slipped back into the house to properly mend the Nutcracker. He gently slid him out of Marie's arms, repaired him under the light of the moon, and disappeared into the darkness. But then, strange things began to happen. At the stroke of midnight, Marie was pulled from her sleep by the clock chimes. She rubbed her eyes in surprise. Great big mice appeared from the shadows and began to scurry across the room. My favorite kind of tea is green apple tea. What's yours? There's a toy in the background too. You hear Dalton here. The music's a little ahead. We'll find out. Oh. With a rumble and shake, the tree began to grow <gasps> before her eyes. The lights were flashing brightly as it rose higher and higher. Marie had never seen anything so big. What a glorious tree. Oh, no. What a glorious tree. That's always my favorite part when the tree grows. This is where we're fighting here. Yes, yeah, so then, then Fritz's toy soldiers sprang to life. They marched into the battle of the mice. The mice were led by the fierce and terrible Mouse King, who wore a shiny crown on his head. Then the Nutcracker himself came to life, growing until he was the size of Marie. His bed, now huge, spun round and around. The Nutcracker leaped out of bed to lead the battle against the mice. The Mouse King towered over the Nutcracker, taunting him, when a quick thinking Marie threw her slipper and it landed on the king's head. Oh, look at the pretty pictures. He turned to look away and the nutcracker toppled him over. The nutcracker triumphantly claimed the mouse king's crown in victory. Ooh. I think we play that music again though, since that was a part of the, yeah, look, her slippers right there. You got it. Okay. Suspenseful. Hand up. Oh, pretty. In that very moment, the ancient spell that had been cast on the Nutcracker was broken. He transformed into a handsome prince who looked very much like Herr Drosselmeyer's nephew. The prince gallantly placed the crown on top of Marie's head and led her by the hand into the starry night, beyond her house and deep into the forest toward the Christmas star. Snow began to fall and the glistening flakes began to dance. Oh. Miss Terry, do you love us? We love you. <laughs> the 
The prince took Marie on a fantastic journey. They boarded a cozy walnut boat and sailed into the night, soon landing in an enchanted kingdom called the Land of Sweets. The Land of Sweets was a magical place filled with candy dripping and icing and magnificent delicious colors as far as the eye could see. News of their arrival traveled fast, and Marie and the prince were greeted by the Sugar Plum Fairy, who reigned over the land. She welcomed them with a curtsy and with a wave of her sparkly wand. A host of delights from her kingdom appeared before them. I love it. Ruby wants, Ruby so loves the Nutcracker. She wants to be the Sugar Plum Fairy. I kind of want to too. What's that one? There's a lot of other things happening in this one. Oh, oh what's the sound? Let's listen to it. Where's the button? Where's the button? Oh. That's what that dance makes me think of, isn't it? Where they, where they pop out. You play, you push it again, we pop up and down. Okay. We're trying. Something like that. Something like that. People who practice ballet and study ballet are magnificent athletes. Yes, they are. The prince told the story of their great battle with the Mouse King. Oh, you are both very brave, the sugar plum fairy said. Then she invited them to celebrate by settling in two magnificent candy thrones with big bowls of chocolate, cake, and ice cream Ooh. set before them. Yums. Mm -hmm. Yums. Oh, not quite done with that one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the sugar plum fairy summoned everyone in the land of sweets to dance for the prince and Marie in honor of their victory. Okay. That may have been what the last one was. No, oh, okay. First, there was a delightful dance of spicy Spanish hot chocolate, heralded by the call of trumpets and snapping fingers. Next came the mysterious Arabian coffee dance that ended with the tinkling of tiny cymbals, giving way to explosive leaps and turns of Chinese tea. That's ours, the coffee dance. Wow. That's Teacher Lori's and Absolutely. Teacher Lori's, the coffee dance. I like that, coffee dance. Mm -hmm. What's that one sound like? This is talking about Arabian tea in China, so oh. that's where we're one ahead now. All right, are we here? Yeah, I think All so. Right. We're looking for the marzipan dancers. The mar- oh. Mm. Oh, that's it. this one. Ah, we're cut. The jumping candy canes emerged next, leaping high into the air and dancing through hoops. What could come after candy canes? Marzipan shepherdesses stepped out, tiptoeing delicately while playing their flutes. Candy canes. Oh, look how magnificent. Okay. Beautiful. <gasps> the biggest surprise of all we love mother ginger was the gigantic mother, mother ginger, ginger who swaggered before them all of a sudden eight tiny clowns called Poland chanels Poland chanels We'll go with it. It's a new word for me. Mm -hmm. Sprang from beneath her skirt and danced to the rhythm of her tambourine. As Mother Ginger scooped her children off, a garden of flowers appeared. Amid the blooms was the shimmering dewdrop fairy. And with each step, she brought every single petal to life in blossoming swirls of pink. We love Mother Ginger. We're reading the other book to see if they think, oh, candy flowers, possibly. Sure, sure. Let's do it. Finally, we ran a great classroom together when we taught together. <laughs> Miss Terry, you loving this? Uh, yeah. You miss us? <laughs> Finally, the real sugar plum fairy returned with her noble cavalier. They floated gracefully about, and then she spun faster and faster before leaping into his arms. It was all so deliciously marvelous. Oh, I, oh, I like, like that. that. Deliciously, deliciously marvelous. marvelous. Ooh, I'm uh, gonna use that. Oh, yeah. Ha ha. Ha ha. We're caught up. Yeah. With another wave of her wand, the sugar plum fairy summoned the whole kingdom for a joyous farewell celebration. I love it. As much as they wanted to stay, it was time for Marie and the prince to leave the land of sweets and return to their families. 
As the lovely soft snow continued to fall, they climbed into a beautiful sleigh pulled by magical reindeer. Marie and the prince turned to wave goodbye to their new friends as they rose higher and higher into the sky, away from their sweet celebration and into the starry night. This looks like they're leaving. Yep. Yep. And that's, let's see, is there another one? There might be another one, because that's the end of this book. George Balanchine's Fun Facts, it says. Oh, oh. is there another one? Nope, that was it. Yeah, it says here. On Christmas morning, Clara wakes up under the tree to find the Nutcracker in her arms, now a toy, once again. Beautiful. The end of the other book. <laughs> <laughs> Nutcracker, a holiday classic. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for reading it. It's longer today. So parents, I hope you'd enjoy your extra five minutes we gave you for your coffee. Thank you for reading for me. Okay, we got to catch our peas. Dixie says she's ready to. I'm bringing home a baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? I'm bringing home a baby bumblebee. Ouch! Stung me. I'm talking to my baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? I'm talking to my baby bumblebee. What do they say? I don't remember. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. How can I help you? Oh, would you like a hug? I'm uh, It was an accident. I didn't mean to. Words are powerful. Use them. I let go of my baby bumblebee. My friends are great. Won't my mom? They put up with me. me. I let go of my baby bumblebee. They're happy to be free. Miss Terry, we love you. Please, we do. Please subscribe to this channel down below so you can have uh, ready for hive time next time for stories. Thank you again for doing it. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. Okay, friends, we'll see you next time.